In this video, I will guide you step by step on setting up a layout with a specific page size and configuration, adding title sheet and organizing drawings, then arranging drawings across multiple layouts efficiently, then lastly, how to prepare layouts for batch plotting to save time and boost productivity. Without further ado, let's dive in into our tutorial. We want to arrange these drawings here from the same project, two floor plans, one elevation and one section into layouts within the same file. To create a layout, the first thing we are going to do, we go all the way down to the bottom left and switch from model space to layout space. And as you see, right now, there's nothing to see and we do not know the size of our paper. To change that, we go all the way down on layout, right click and choose page setup manager, or we could also go to layout one and click here on page setup. In both scenarios, the page setup manager pops up. Then we hit modify, and open the page setup for layout one. Here we have a couple of options to choose from. The first one, printer or plotter. We can either choose a physical printer. In my case, I have the Rico MP, or we could go for a virtual printer like DWG to PDF. I want to stick to this one for this tutorial and choose a virtual printer. Then we have to choose paper size. From here, we choose the paper which we would like to have in reality printed. Is it? an A4 paper, an A3 paper, a letter paper, whatever our printer allows and we would like to choose. For this tutorial, I want to go with an A3 paper and pay attention to the name. I want to choose the ISO full bleed A3, okay, 297 by 420 units. There are also other A3 paper sizes here, for example, ISO expand A3, but it has a bigger border margin. No, I want to make use of the whole paper and choose ISO full bleed A3, okay? So, the next option is plot era. What to plot, we have four options. Whatever is displayed, according to the extents, the whole layout or window. For this tutorial right now, I want to go for window. Then I will choose my whole A3 paper, okay? And then here, plot scale. We can choose in scale, the scale we would like to have printed and choose here the unit according to your drawing. If you are using inches, go for inches. If you are using millimeters, go for millimeters. Okay, so, but right now I want to go with fit to paper. One thing very important, later on we will come back to properties and adjust the margin error, which will save you a lot of headache and problems in the future you might face. For light, right now, we will leave it as it is. Then we come to plot style table and choose here a plot style where the ICAD.CTB is a colorful uh, printer style, allows us to print our drawing in colors. Grayscale and monochromatic will change everything in our drawing, even if you have colored objects or lines or hatches to black and white. And these four here, according to their percentage, will print with transparency. I want to go for ICAD.CTB for our tutorial. Then here in quality, as the name suggests, I am sticking to normal, you could go higher to maximum. Then plot options, make sure if you have object with line weights in your drawing that you have plot object line weights. So even if you have line weights in your drawing, but this is turned off, you won't see your line weights while printing. So I want to make sure it's on. The same goes for transparency. Plot with plot styles, if you, Disable this one, these guys, the, this option here won't take effect. Okay, so plot with plot style as I chose ICAD.CTB. Plot paper space and the lastly, drawing orientation. Do you want our A3 in landscape mode or in portrait mode? I want to stick with landscape. So right now we are done here. We may come back later to it. We will click OK and then close. And now we have a paper which is 420 units horizontally and 297 units vertically, so an A3 paper. You may notice this border here, this is the area where we can put drawings in from our model space. Before we bring in drawings, I want to add my title sheet here to the layout. To do so, I either type insert and choose from my previously loaded blocks, from recent blocks, or there's other, another option if you haven't done so, you simply open your title sheet in another drawing file, select it, control C, go back to our main project file, control V, and then we have to adjust the location of our title sheet. 
So, we have done so. This is our title sheet. And if you notice, if I click on it, you see it's a block. And that's for a purpose. Here I have, for example, project name. And if I adjust the project name, for example, to Villa01, as my project is Villa01, through all the drawings, through all the layouts, this name here will change to project Villa01. The date, as we want to have the same date for all our drawings. So I have only once to adjust the name here. But drawing title, I left it empty because I don't want it to be affected by the other layouts that I create because I want to write here ground floor, first floor, section or elevation when I create new layouts. Even if you don't understand it right now, it does not matter because we will do it practically and you will see exactly what I mean. So, after we had made our title sheet, probably I could adjust the location a bit better. Yes, perfect. So, after we have added our title sheet, we need to bring our first drawing. For that purpose, the first thing I do, double click inside this window and see we type zoom, enter, W, enter and create a rectangle around our first drawing. So this area here is considered our model space within this rectangle and this rectangle here won't be visible when we print. We could even adjust the location for it. Double click outside to go back to paper space. I want to adjust this rectangle to the frame where I would like to have my drawings inside displayed from the model space. Then this time, again, double click inside, zoom, W, enter, and we will be able to make our drawing much bigger. Press scroll and adjust it so nothing is left out, double click outside. So we have created our first layout with our first floor plan. Then to also insert the other drawings into layouts, instead of creating a new layout by pressing this plus here, why we should not create a new layout? Because then we will have to go through all the settings we have been through again. No, instead of that, right click, delete, let's delete this one. And instead of that, on layout one, which we have modified, right click and find move or copy. Click on that, make sure create a copy is checked, move to end and hit OK. So as you see, we have created an exact copy from layout one to layout one two. Then select both with creating shift as we have four drawings. Again, right click, move or copy, create a copy, move to end and hit OK. Four, four layouts, layout one for the ground floor, layout two, double click inside, zoom out, then zoom, enter, W, enter, create a rectangle around the drawing. Perfect. Press scroll to adjust it. Good. Now we have our second drawing. So for the third one, again, double click, zoom out, zoom, enter, W, enter, to add our elevation as well. Perfect. Double click outside to go back to paper space. Layout four, double click inside. Or there's also another way. Here we could click on paper space and it changed directly, as you see, to model space. Let's find our section. Zoom, enter, W, enter, and choose our section. We could probably make it a bit bigger, W, by creating a smaller window. Perfect. Double click outside. Or paper space. Click on this one. We go back to the paper space. So either double click here inside and outside of the layout or by clicking on paper space, switching between model or paper space. So now we need to adjust the names for each one, rename GF for ground floor. This one, rename FF for first floor. So if, this is very useful to arrange your drawings or label your drawings for large projects. If you have a lot of drawings, to find your specific drawing, your specific floor plan, level, or section uh, very easily. So I recommend you, you give them names. So, ground floor, first floor, elevation, and section. The last thing to do, which I previously explained it here, I left drawing title empty. So let's double click here on our block and hit OK. And for project name, let's type Villa01. 
That's where it's very important. Save change, changes to title sheet. Okay. So in ground floor, in the first layout, I have written below 01. If I go to FF, which is first floor, I have the same name or my elevation and section as well. But for drawing title, let me go back to my first layout. I will type text here. And then I would type ground floor. Perfect. Oops. Rotate. Yes. So then control C. Why? Because this text is not integrated into the title sheet block. If I go to FF, there is nothing. So if I would have integrated into my block, all my sheets will change to ground floor. So that's why I type the drawing title separately. First floor plan, then control C, elevation. Let's type north elevation and so on for our section as well. Section A slash A. So we are done with creating. We had here four drawings. We created layouts for each of our drawings. So let's move on to the bonus part of this tutorial. How to do batch plot. So instead, previously, if we wanted to plot out these ones, we had to control P or go to print for each of our drawings separately. But right now, because we have arranged our project into separate layouts, we simply right click on any of the layout and go for select all layouts. Then again, on the layouts, right click and go for publish selected layouts. Then here, choose the type of print. I want to go for PDF. And if you have um, a physical print loaded, you can choose that one as well. Okay. And as you see, sheet name, layout, GF, FF, elevation, and sections. The ones we created. Click on publish. Choose the location I want to go for my uh, desktop. Select. I have previously, do you want to replace it? Yes, I have previously created one. And your printing or publishing job is processing in the background. So after a few seconds, plot and publish job complete, which means in the background, our printing is finished. To find it, we will go to the location. We have saved it. And we see we have all our drawing merge it into one PDF and virtually we have done the batch plot which we could also do for the physical front. But we encountered one problem where part of our title sheet is cut out and that's because of the margin setup from the uh, print properties or page setup properties. This is very easy to solve and usually we encounter this problem. To solve this problem here, we go back to our file and here right click on any of our layout and go to page setup manager or let's do it the same way so you don't get confused here page setup manager gf modify and then remember this name iso full bleed a3 297 by 420 millimeters go for properties and here find modify standard paper size printable era this is very important and here find the exact name for the paper size so we go for ISO full bleed A3297, the same name we have here in paper size. Click on modify, and as you see in custom paper size printable era, we have some margins. Okay, we type zero by zero to make use of the whole A3 paper, then next, and click on finish. Then OK, change to a printer configuration file, hit OK again, then window from this location to this location, and then center plot. And preview yes then this time we have done it correctly so this time if we hit ok and close and go through the same process select one layout press shift to select all layouts or we could simply right click on any of the layouts and go for select all layouts then again on the layout right click publish selected layouts publish to pdf hit to publish select a location this time you'll type Layout tutor to select, and in the background, we will get again a PDF which is plotted in the background, but this time it won't cut out this area here. 
So again, we got the message that plot and publish job completed in the background. So let's move on to the location we saved our PDF, double click on it. And this time you see, we got all our drawings arranged into separate sheets without any problems. And we solved the area here where our object got cut out. This was it for our today's tutorial. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section.